All right, guys. Looks like I got it. So, yeah, we're good. We're good, we're good, we're good. Maybe. I mean, I hope so. Possibly. Okay. So, as far as uh, questions, I'm starting with 5.2. 5.1, relatively straightforward. Look it over. It's not so bad. Honestly, we use a lot of the stuff from 5.1. In the you know, as far as the uh, angle bisectors and perpendicular bisectors go, so I'm not uh, worried too much about that. I don't know if you guys are, but either way, all right. So as far as it goes, I'm not seeing any comments after mine. I thought there were though. Wait, what happened to them? Someone can say a comment. Oh, there we go. Got it. Okay. Oh, updated really weird. Okay. Uh, yeah, angle. Okay, so, I mean, the, the good ones to do, again, I, I cannot, do you want to do a rundown of the four things again? I mean, I can, but at the same time, we did that in class, and uh, you probably wrote it five times, or should have written it five times, because that's what I did. I didn't write it for you because I mean I'm not I, I mean I did it on the board a bunch we did but I, I I can do that that's fine let's actually run we'll do a quick rundown of the whole of the the main things here and uh, we'll go from there all right so let's let's just do that here okay a couple things first things first uh, if I have a, an angle bisector right if this is going to be a very thick triangle. Just, just the CK version though. Okay, so uh, if I, basically if I was drawing a perpendicular bisector, right? So a perpendicular bisector of this means I'm perpendicularly bisecting a side. So the thing that I would look for would be it going through the midpoint, because that's a bisector, right? So when I see bisector, I think midpoint. And of course, when I see perpendicular, I think right angle. I just did the same symbol, I don't know, for I think right angle. Okay, so here we go. Bisector means it's splitting the line in half, perpendicular. So this side is being perp perpendicularly bisected about like, about like that. And again, perpendicular, bisector. And of course that means if I said, hey, this line is a perpendicular bisector right here. Then you'd say, oh, this is a perpendicular bisector. That means that it's split in half, that this is the midpoint. It's split in half and that's a right angle, so it works both ways. All right, so that's perpendicular bisector. Okay, sound good? Next. All right, uh, but if I have a bunch of them, why is that new page? Why can't I get a new, oh, because that's on the screen. It's not written on the thing, ah, you see. All right, um, we're gonna, I'm gonna try this. Yeah. Okay, and then so the, um, Okay, I'm just gonna keep on. I'm just gonna go through this. Just go right through. Then I'll get any questions. All right. So, uh, and then if I have uh, all the perpendicular bisectors, right? So if I have like um, them all, all right, that's supposed to be a line as well. I get used to this. Sorry, not sorry. That's horrible. You know what? Mm, I like doing it this way. So you know what? We're going to. Got to get, okay, this is here, erase that, good. Now we'll go up here and we'll draw this and we'll see what we can do. All right, so um, so if I have, again, a, I'm gonna make it a cube this time. So if I have this and I and I draw a couple perpendicular bisectors, they intersect, right? Uh, again, if I drew the midpoint is, let's say here, oh, I wanna draw midpoint, right, it's here. And then, a, and then a midpoint here, uh, and again it's a midpoint because I'm because it's in the middle. It's a, and so if I draw two or more of them, and again I could draw all three, and they will intersect at the same point. But of course these lines are concurrent. The perpendicular bisectors are concurrent at the again if I drew a perpendicular and then perpendicular, I only need two really, but I can draw them all, and they they'd be concurrent. They intersect at the same point. Now most of the time when we draw these things, right? What they'll what they'll do is they'll be like um, 
Uh, eraser. Can I just erase? Okay. What the what they'll only be is they'll basically be like only to the point of of intersection. So like here and like up to this point of intersection. But again, it's perpendicular and it's a bisector, so I'd mark them perpendicular. Awesome. And then and it's not perfect, but it'll work. So the idea is that these are the perpendicular bisectors, and so we know that the theorem about perpendicular bisectors is that it's equidistant to the end point here. In other words, if, if I go to the, uh, from the circumcenter, right, which is the point of concurrency, to each of these endpoints, these dashed lines, these green lines right here are gonna be congruent. And of course, you end up with right triangles, right angles, but again, if I said perpendicular bisector or the word circumcenter, you would be able to mark all of this stuff congruent. Just go crazy, oops, go crazy with marking stuff concurrent. Okay, all right, now congruence, like things that are congruent, lines that are, that are congruent, all that stuff. So we can mark all of this, right? Um, all of this stuff, and again, we can go from there. But if you notice, the blue lines, the actual perpendicular bisectors, right, which are the things that are making the circumcenter, the actual perpendicular bisectors are not congruent, okay? They're not congruent, okay? What is gonna be congruent is the lines that go to the actual uh, angles that go to the vertices of the angles, right? So it's that's the distance uh, that are congruent. So it's kind of like the opposite of the in-center. Perpendicular bisector has to split the segment in half evenly because, again, it's a bisector. It is bisecting the segment, yes. Heck yeah, it does, okay? All right, so that's the that one, all right? So if I make a, another sort of triangle here. Whatever. You know what, let's just clear it all. I'll just make it again. Okay, so if I make another triangle um, and we look at the angle bisectors, right? An angle bisector is just a line that splits the angles, right? So, well, so, so it's kind of weird because if you look at it, remember in the other one, it was from the point of concurrency to the edges were all the same. In this case, they're not the same, but they do specifically bisect the angles. That's what makes them, of course, angle bisectors. Uh, and so it would go to like here, it could of course go further, but it would go, they would meet at a, at a place, all at the same place, because they're concurrent. So those would be my angle bisectors. And of course, my angle bisectors split these angles up, which means, again, if I know one, I know the other. If I know pieces of, of all of them, they're still a triangle. The green thing is still a triangle, right? Um, oops, I had a little extra one in there. Um, but either way, the, the, so there we go. So this is the in-center. And of course, we should know that the in-center is always, regardless of the type of triangle it's inside. Again, basically that chart. So I would make, memorize that, that chart. Um, um, so again, it's a little different too, because again, the last one we had, we had lines that were perpendicular. The perpendicular lines weren't congruent because they were perpendicular, like the perpendicular bisectors make the circumcenter, but those, those lines weren't congruent. It was the lines to the angles that were congruent. In this case, it's the opposite. These lines aren't congruent, but the lines that are perpendicular to the sides are going to be congruent. I mean, maybe my drawing is a little off, but these would be congruent normally. Okay, so it's like the perfect. So you know, it doesn't it doesn't bisect the sides though. So these are perpendicular, but they are not perpendicular bisectors. So that's what in center is. So again, the point itself is the in center, and again, that's where the angle bisectors meet. And of course, this is always inside. regardless of the type of triangle. All right, um, and then again, the perpendicular bisectors could be inside, outside, or on, depending on if it was acute, obtuse, or right, respectively, okay? All right, I know we're doing a rundown. I, I, I guess we can, is this, is this helping or no? I mean, I can, I can just do specific problems if you want, but if this is helping and I'm, I can just go through the other two, that's, that's okay. I'll just, until I hear a response, I'll just keep on going forward, all right. So if we have a, another triangle, and I talk about medians in this case, okay? Medians go from the midpoints, okay? 
So we have a midpoint like here, um, a midpoint here, midpoint here, and again, uh, it'll be a midpoint because I'm, whoa, that's way too big, because um, I'm gonna mark it as a midpoint. But here you go, there you go. One, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three. So those are all midpoints because I marked them all midpoints, but the actual uh, sort of medians themselves connect the opposite vertex to the midpoint. Vertex to midpoint, vertex to midpoint. And again, they are concurrent. See, they meet at a point of concurrency. That point of concurrency is the centroid. So again, medians, point of concurrency is the centroid. So again, this means if you know something's a centroid, you know there are medians. If you know something, are me if you see medians intersect, you know it's the centroid. And the centroid is the one that falls into the, in, in the uh, the category where the actual uh, segments, right? The, the actual median is split up by the centroid, but the centroid's here. It gets, splits the median into two parts, a small part and a large part. The small part is always half of the large part. Okay. Um, and again, they're not, they're, all the medians are unrelated to each other, but each, you know, but the median within itself is, is related. So again, if this was this, this large part was 10, that'd be five, the whole thing's 15. If I knew the whole thing, right? If I, again, if I knew this whole line, you can think of it as like, oh, well, three X equals that whole thing because it's two X plus X and you can divide by three to get the small part, right? So that's sort of our, our rule there. And again, in the, in the case of the medians, it's always inside, okay? Regardless of the type of triangle, this is an obtuse triangle and it's still inside. Okay, uh, all right, and then finally, we have ourselves altitudes. And altitudes are going to meet, um, the one thing we know about altitudes is that, or the two things, right? There's two things for altitudes, and then I will write that. Uh, but they're gonna go from the vertex to the opposite, perpendicular to the opposite side. So again, from this vertex, there's only one place that I can make it perpendicular. It's like, nope, 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 nope. Where's the form of right angle? Here, right? It's about here. It's forming my right angle. Oops, missed it, but that's okay. And again, from here, where, to, where is it? Uh, forming right angle, somewhere along here. Bam, right, of course, this one's straight down, but that's okay. And then here, where is it going to form a right angle? It's got to be along this side somewhere. Bam, right angle. And of course, they are concurrent. And I'll mark that. Um, I'll, when I think of altitudes, I'm thinking about uh, right angles. Because again, they're perpendicular to the opposite side, which means I'm looking for a right angle. A right angle on a line that goes to the opposite vertex. So each of these are altitudes. And this is the orthocenter. And the cool thing about the orthocenter is that there's not a cool thing about the orthocenter. And then in other words, there's no orthocenter theorem that says something. It's just, there it is. So again, that would be our um, altitudes. Orthocenter. Right? What was the final score of the game, Rachel? Did you guys win? Okay. Um, okay, so there's the rundown of the game, of the game, <laughs> of, of sort of the, the main stuff. Again, you can look back uh, and you can see sort of if, you know, if you have any questions. Oh, I guess I should say that this, out the altitudes work, the, the orthocenter, I should say, is the same way as the circumcenter in that if the triangle is acute like it is up here, there, then of course the orthocenter is gonna be on the inside. If, the, if it's obtuse, right, we're gonna end up with, uh, with, we're gonna end up with heights, which are altitudes, right, that are outside the triangle. So if they can meet outside the triangle is when it's an obtuse triangle. And if it's a right triangle, it's actually gonna be right on the triangle. And not only on the triangle, it's gonna be here. It's gonna be right, uh, let me do another new color so we can see. It's gonna be right here. Okay. Uh, 
Uh, the best acronym was... I don't remember what it was, but Mr. there was a uh, fifth period came up with the one. Feel free to say it, Justin or Matt or who else came up with it? That's not bad. All boys in my class play bass, cello, and oboe. It's a pretty rocking class, though. Okay, so there we go. So let's now. I'm gonna just scroll back up, see if there's any uh, um, any questions that I can look at. Oh, Inti. Inti thought of it. My bad. And I, I, I forget who wrote it. I mean, I remember who wrote it. I don't remember who thought of it. Okay, regardless. Am um, I doing a CompSci A1 after this? If you have a CompSci A questions after this, yes. I uh, probably will be done here in 10, 15, uh, nah, let's say 15 to 30 minutes. And then if you have questions, I can, I can answer them. Um... All right, so let us begin. Well, let's look at the questions. I don't, um, we're going by, I don't see any. Just you, Blake, just you. Um, just kidding, that's not true. Anyway, the, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. As far as the packet goes, I do have it here. Okay. Yeah, stay tuned, Comps IA. All right. Angle bisector problems with 5.2. Wait, all of them or just one? Well, I'll find, find one. All right, I mean, these are angle bisectors. Um, these are this one do this one okay and I know these are angle bisectors because this is the in center and so the idea of course is that if I have the in center right I'm saying that this says in center so um, then point T of course is the place where the angle bisectors meet which means that the lines that go from here to point T have to be angle bisectors so this is an, is bisecting the angle this is bisecting this angle. Again, they're not the same, but they're bisecting their respective angles. And this last one is bisecting its respective angle. Okay? And so it's the point of concurrency of the angle bisectors. Okay? So, the one, and again, a thing we should know about angle bisectors is that. So yes, all the angle bisectors meet at this point they're called the in center, but from the distance from the in center to the for, to each ver uh, to each side, I should say. So that would be this right here, this right here, and this right here. All those blue lines right there are going to be congruent. So I can mark them as such. So if one of them is 15, hey, guess what? They're all 15, right? So it's kind of like, but these aren't perpendicular bisectors. I just want to be clear. They're, they're the distance from the in center to the side. Yes, they have to be perpendicular, but they're not bisectors. If this was six and I said, what's this? You'd have to tell me, I don't know. Okay, because basically you, you don't know. You don't know what's a bisector. Okay, so only if it says circumcenter or specifically it marks them as bisectors, would you know that? All right, so uh, ST, we do know ST, of course, is 15. Uh, it says if TU is 2x plus 1, so TU, well, we know TU is also 15, so we can just say T, 2x uh, minus 1 equals 15, right? 2x equals 16, x equals 8, because that's algebra, all right? Yeah, I'll do the one at the end. And then, of course, because these are angle bisectors, of course, we know something about the angles, but P, R, T is this angle right here, right? Um, right? Oh, it says if PRT is 24 degrees. So if this is 24, then QRT, of course, would also be 24 because those are the ones that are being bisected. If RPQ or PQ, so this whole angle 62, then RPT, this half angle, would be half of it, 31 and 31, if the whole thing was, was 62. Okay? So, not so bad. I mean, this could be a question. Questions on the quiz. Hey, here's a diagram. It's the in-center. Mark everything you know. Well, again, once you mark it, once you know the information, 
it's there. But yeah, there's you definitely need to, of course, know the basics of, I could give you matching where it's in center and you have to know that matches up the angle bisector and that's it. I could give you ones that say the in center is, is, um, is outside the triangle and you have to tell me never, right? I mean, so you, you got to be able to know, know the information and then apply it. Well, it's weird. That's probably what every teacher says. Know the information, apply it. So it says, well, if there's a 90 degree marking, it doesn't mean it's a bisector. No, no, 90 degree means that it's perpendicular. 90 degrees means it's there. The lines are perpendicular. It has nothing to do with being a bisector, right? This line DG, again, I just happened to pick it and see this one right here, but this line DG is a perpendicular bisector right, of triangle ABC. Because again, look, it's it's perpendicular to this side, but it also is perpendicular at a midpoint because it's a bisector. It's bisecting the side. Remember, there's two different types of bisectors, angle bisectors and segment bisectors. A perpendicular bisector is bisecting the segment, right? So DG is a perpendicular bisector. Yeah, we can go to those if you want. Again, these are great ones to do in center, circum center. Again, this is a great, look how many points that'd be on a test. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight points right here, bam. Oh, uh, you mean the review one, that was five one and five two, Alex? Or five two and five three, I should say. This one, the one that was part of this. Again, this is the part that I'm talking about though, that like, should just be like, hey, who wants free points? Get your free points. Who wants free points? Get them while they're hot. Angle bisectors of a triangle. Where, where's the point of concurrency? In center. The medians. I was about to, uh, altitude is ortho center. Sorry, I saw I was reading that one. This would be, I was trying to figure out how I could turn that O into a C, but I can't. So medians are centroid. Altitude is ortho center. Perpendicular bisector is circumcenter. All right, so again, quick, super easy. Look, look at that, there we go, ha ha. We got them. All right, and then I could do these three pretty easy. The in center is equal distance. Again, remember the in center is angle bisectors, okay? But the angle bisectors are equal distant from the sides. Again, they're not equal distant from the angles. The angles are being bisected by the angle bisectors, but the actual in center is equal distant from the sides. So it's kind of a reverse thing. Um, all right, circumcenter is equal distant from the vertices or the angles you could put, but I don't know why I got so big, vertices, and the centroid is always two-thirds of the distance from each vertex. In other words, again, it's, it works out the same way, but again, if you do like the like two-thirds times the whole median, you're going to get the long part. Okay. I don't know if I'm going to change this back to smaller. Okay. So again, those would be just like points that were just, wow, I don't even know. Why would I even give those to you? I don't know, because I'm that generous. I'm magnanimous, okay? Again, it changed big again. Can you believe that? Okay, so this should be pretty easy to fill out. Again, acute obtuse, right? We know regardless of acute triangle is going to be inside, regardless. So I'm just going to write in. We know that re in the in-center and centroid, it's gonna be inside regardless, so lots of ins here. You gotta know the ins and outs, you know, of this chapter. Hey, oh, okay, circumcenter, we know an acute triangle is in. If it's obtuse, it's on the outside. On the right triangle, it's on the triangle. And the same thing goes for an orthocenter. So if you wanna sort of match those up in your head, but those are free questions. If you know that chart, if you know what those things are, it's like I could ask you 12 different questions on these 12 points. I like how she's retracting her own, uh, her own answers. Yeah, so the, there is an answer key to this, what I'm doing. It, it, it is posted on Schoology, so you can check it out. It's just there, is, there are no videos. I didn't, I didn't make, uh, Mr. Greenhill was in charge of making this key, and he, I told him to make any videos, and he said uh, he, his class doesn't deserve it or something. I don't know, something along those lines. Um, Uh, I need to scroll down. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Um, this should be pretty pretty simple, pretty straightforward, right? Um, I 
I mean, I, I hope, right? It's like, hey, look, there's a bunch of lines in this triangle. But again, if I'm looking for an altitude, I know I'm looking for only one thing. I'm looking for a right angle that goes through vertex. There's only one right angle on this whole thing, and it's here. So does this line that forms a right angle with this side go to the vertex? You bet your sweet bottom it does, right? So that would Rx would be... Rx would definitely be um, your altitude. Okay, median. When I think about a median... All right, this, the fact that I think this is a cursor here totally bothers me. Um, anyway, so if you think about a median, we think of midpoint. So we know that it goes from a midpoint to the opposite side. So I'm checking to see if, if there, there's any midpoints on any of these. Is U midpoint? Could be, but it's not marked, so I'm gonna say no. Is M a midpoint? Doesn't look like it, and it's not marked, so no. Is X a midpoint? Nope, doesn't look like it, and it's not marked. Oh, is S a midpoint? Yeah, S is marked as a midpoint. Does it go, does a line from S go to the opposite vertex? Uh-huh, so, so, S-O, there you go. You bet your sweet angle side side it does, guys, okay? All right, um, here we go. All right, and then we have the last one where we're talking about um, uh, angle bisector. Again, you look for one of the angles and see if it's being bisected. There's a bunch of lines here. If any of these were marked as sort of being the same on either side, then it'll be a bisector. It's not. There's something coming from this one, but it's not being marked as a bisector, so I'm ignoring it. Oh, here. These are being these angles are marked as congruent, therefore BU is my angle bisector. Right? So we're just looking for what you got. Um, how often time is between a perpendicular bisector and altitude on a triangle? Okay. So the reason why this is, this is perpendicular Okay, but it's not a bisector. It's not going through the midpoint. Again, if I had a line that was like uh, this. Okay, the, the red one that I just drew in would be a perpendicular bisector. Because what is it doing? Well, it goes through the midpoint. I know it's a midpoint because it's marked as a midpoint. So it's bisecting it, right? That's the bisector part. Um, and then it's perpendicular as in a right angle. So it, it did form that right angle that I drew. So that would be a perpendicular bisector, S, A. Okay. Yeah, so I think the um, the key, so she's saying that she might not remember them when she gets out to the test, but I think the key to that would just be to remember them. You know, just like, remember them. If you remember all the information in your head, it's kind of like cheating, but no one knows. You know, it's like all in your head. Pretty crazy, right? Don't tell them. Mr. Spitzer, I said that. Okay, that's a, that's a life hack. Uh, all right, so if I'm looking, uh, I don't know if we want to do these or not. Um, Someone asked a question on this one. This one was a lot of setup for this question just to find out what it is. I mean, we can walk through it pretty quickly, but if you understand what the, they're, they're saying, like DB is a median of ADC. So ADC is this triangle here. So this is a median. It means it's going from a vertex, yep, to a midpoint. So it's telling me essentially that this is a midpoint, okay? AD is an altitude of this AEC, this big triangle. So this is an altitude, meaning it forms a right angle. Of course, it would be a right angle on the other side as well, okay? Then it says AD equals DB, so AD equals DB, and then it says AB equals DB as well, which means that all of these things are the same. Okay, so of course, then I'd would, then I would be like, okay, now that these are markings, I don't have any numbers, but hey, look, I have numbers because these, this is an equilateral triangle. Equilateral triangle means that we know it's 60, 60, 60, or at least we should. That should be pretty instinctual by now. But this whole angle is 90, so that means this has to be 30. This triangle right here we look at is an isosceles triangle, two congruent sides, which means we got some base angles that are congruent. So this is 30. And again, if that's 30, then that's what we're looking for. C, C. Um, or we could have done 60 and that's 120, and that's 30 and then got it that way. But either way, I mean, you still have to, I think, either know, get one extra angle or know that it's isosceles. But again, you can get there. It's not that bad. It's just a like, if you don't have numbers, you're probably going to end up trying to prove something isosceles or equilateral or 90. You're going to have angles with that that aren't numbered, because, but they're going to be like sort of special angles. Okay.
Okay. Uh, the one where you have to find this stuff. You want to do one of these? I mean, I could probably do these last three and finish it out here with these three. What do you say? Yeah. Let's do it. Okay. So, so if I am taking a gander here, let's use a little green. The first thing I'm going to do, of course, is read the directions because in center. A is the in-center. If it's the in-center, I'm thinking in-center means an angle bisector. So A is the in-center. It's the place where the angles, angle bisectors meet. So if I have a line that goes from here to the ver vertices, I know that these must be angle bisectors. So I'm going to mark them as being bisected, or that these, that these angles are being bisected. Okay, so I mark these angles here as being bisected. Okay, additionally, what I would do is I would sort of make a note or mark that oops, no, I'll use these. That these lines right here is that the distance from the in center to the sides, and so these are these are already sort of drawn in. But these distances, I thought that was going to be straight. Okay, that these distances right here and right here and right here, that was horrible, are all going to be the same. So the, all that green that I just did is just from this. Okay. That's just from what it said in the problem. Nothing else. I, okay. Now we actually again. What I'm not even. I didn't even care. I'm not even concerning myself with what I'm trying to find yet. I'm just dumping all the information that I kind of know down there as far as congruency marks go. The I, that that's it though. So I, I mean, I, I of course I could say, well, if that's 36, and of course then I, these are the ones that involve a little bit of calculations or just numbers that involve after the markings. But the green is everything you can mark. Okay. Um, and then we can again. I can continue through with stuff like I can find this angle down here it eventually does ask me for this I have actually that might be the first one no it eventually asks ask me for for like different angles and stuff but again I know that this MKR this triangle again of course adds it to 180 so if this is 36 and 36 well then that's going to be 72 degrees right the whole angle I should say so I'm just putting it out here just so I see it uh, and then this 28.5 plus 28.5 is going to be um, 57. Check me on that. Okay. You just double it. Okay. Uh, and so then I, of course I could just subtract from 180. I think I put a button that pull the calculator. Is that a fact? Let's see. Nope. This is it. Calc. Look at that. Look at that guys. All right, so uh, I could do 28.5 times 2, 57, nail it, uh, plus 72, and then I subtract from 180. And so this whole angle down here is, we know it's going to be 51 because those blue angles, right, all these angles have to add to 180, so that's why I subtracted to 180. And then this right here, if I divide it in half, and again, I'm ignoring that negative, and of course, I'm not typing anything in either, apparently, um, but... Uh, so if I divide that by 2, we know it's 25.5. Okay, so right here, we know each one of these is 25.5. And again, I am just not even concerning myself with, with what I'm trying to find yet. I'm just going and finding everything that I can. So now I'm saying, well, if that's 36 and that's 90, then this looks like that's going to be 54 degrees there. That's going to be 54 degrees there. Um, this is 28.5, so I can subtract from... Uh, that from from 180 here. Give me this calculator. Come on. Is it gonna pull up a new one? No, I don't want that. Whatever. Uh, and so I could say sort of 90 minus 28.5, and we know that this is 61.5 degrees, and so is this. 25.5. Uh, so we know that if I pull up another calculator. We have 90 minus 25.5, so this is 64.5. Again, do I need all this? Again, would I, prob would I do all of this on the test? No, but I'm just showing you that you can get a lot of this stuff without even like, I mean, I could just bounce around and find everything that I, that I know. And again, I probably would mark these green ones congruent. I drew, I like highlighted them to show that they were congruent, but you would, you would definitely uh, mark them as well. Okay, so this is sort of without doing a whole lot of calculation. So now let's, let's get, let's, no. 
better be able to line it up. That's all I'm saying. Whew. Crisis averted, people. Okay. So now, what is KMR? KMR. Easy. 57. Already found it. It was. This is just. Wait, 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 wait. So, of course, if you just come on the live stream now, you can always go and rewatch the previous one, right? I don't know how to do anything. That's not true. Wait, I'm, good night. I'm going to cry about how I'm failing out of school. That's not very cool. Um, anyway, but I got this. AS. Okay, I'm going to do all the angles first because I think I got most of those. M-A-S, so we have M-A-S, 61.5, K-R-A, K-R-A, 25.5, P-A-R, P, so I'm just doing all the angles first because it might be easier, P-A-R, 64.5, M-A-K, M-A-K is this whole angle right here, so I can just add these two up which is um, 116.5, I think, 15.5, 115.5. Uh-huh, I think so. Correct me if I'm wrong. Okay, and so I got all the angles. Now it comes down to the size. Yeah, perpendicular bisectors aren't the same length. Okay, I, I know I answered this earlier. Sarah asked on one of the review questions, there is a circumcenter, but the perpendicular bisectors are not the same length, and they shouldn't be. They don't have to be. Perpendic like, look at this question. This is talking about angle bisectors because it's the in-center. The angle bisectors are not the same length. All these angle bisectors are not the same length. What are the same, same length is the distance to the sides. So it's kind of like the reverse of the of of that right um so in other words in this case uh but fyi sarah was not warming up with her shin guards on so i don't know about what that was about but regardless if you're talking about she was, she was asking this question but if, if you're thinking about the perpendicular bisectors they aren't congruent right the this, the length of the perpendicular bisectors aren't congruent but the length of from the from where they meet the circumcenter to the vertices are. Anyway, let's finish out this question before we get off too far off track. Okay, so AS. This case is a matter of, okay, we know that this is the same as this is this, but I'm trying to find this. I don't know any of them, but once I know one, I can find them all. But look, I have a right triangle here. Bam, bam, bam. So I basically am looking at a right triangle like this that has, again, this only works for right triangles, but I'm trying to find this side. I know this side is 20.5. I know this is 20. So I have a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So again, a squared plus 20 squared equals 20.5 squared. Again, I know the hypotenuse is always across from the right angle, so I would use it to solve. This ends up being 4.5. 20 squared is 420.5 squared is 420.25, and then I subtract, get 20.25. Radical 20.25 is uh, 4.5. Again, I'm gonna leave that math to you, but basically this is 4.5. Again, I don't just mark it here either. I don't just write it in the blank. I do that as well, but I'm writing it here and then every place that it is so I know where it is, okay? Then it says we're trying to find AK. Well, AK is this line. Again, these aren't all the same. That That's not what it does. The actual angle bisectors are not congruent. Um, so, so we have a triangle here right right triangle this is six this is 4.5 because we just found it and so when we do pythagorean theorem it's going to be uh we're going to try to find c so we have 4.5 squared plus uh, six squared equals c squared and we end up spoiler with 7.5 as c so this is 7.5 so ak is 7.5 we're trying to find ia Oop, ia is the same thing it's 4.5 we already knew that awesome filled it out nailed it blam Okay. Sound good? All right. All right, all right, all right. 
Is this one okay? We got it, makes sense. Angles, uh, angles ID side. I don't get it. Okay, let's do another one. Okay, let's do another one. Again, I, I did a lot. I spent a lot of time just saying, hey, look, it's the in center, dumping information. And then from there, it becomes a matter of problem solving. Hey, if there's two sides of a right triangle, find the third with Pythagorean theorem. If I know an angle is being bisected and I know one part, I know I can double it to find the whole thing or match them up. I know I can use triangles add up to 180. I know that, you know, I know vertical angles, there aren't any here, but I, I could use that. I could use linear pairs if I need to, stuff like that. Okay. No, perpendicular bisectors are not congruent. The line in per, in in, a, in perpendicular bisectors, the lines that go to the angles are congruent. But in angle by but in angle bisectors, right, the lines that go to these sides are. It's sort of like a reverse. And I'll show you the next next question. I, I think you'll you'll see. So this is the circumcenter, okay? So again, let's do the information dump. Everything that I know about this, I'm gonna even use green so it's the same as last time. Okay, if G is the circumcenter, that means this is the place where perpendicular bisectors meet. Is G A a perpendicular bisector? No, it doesn't bisect the side, but G R is, right? So I know that this is both perpendicular and it bisects, okay? I know that G S, right, is perpendicular and it bisects. I know that GX is a perpendicular to the side of the triangle and it bisects the side of the triangle. What I don't know is that is GX, GR, and GS, are the actual perpendicular bisectors themselves congruent? No, but what they are, are equidistant from the actual angle. So it's like, in this case, the, si the thing that are things that are coming from the side aren't congruent, but the things that are going to the angles are. And then the, in the other one, it was the things that are coming from the angles are not congruent, but the things going to the side are. So it's, again, it's sort of a bit of a reversal. All right, this one, let's mark everything. We, we pretty much marked all the stuff. The only other thing is that we do know that, that this is going to be congruent to all these dotted lines are going to be congruent as well because they're equidistant to the, to the uh, vertices of the triangle. Okay, um, if this is 41, is this 41? The answer is no. We don't know that. I would not put that, so no. Okay, this is not an angle bisector. It doesn't bisect the angle. I wouldn't think it did. And, it, and what's ob and a super obvious one would be, of course, down here, right? This is clearly not bisected. Right? The whole thing is 51, but it's clearly not being split. Like, I'm not splitting that into 25.5 and 25.5. It does not do that. Okay, so now uh, we're trying to find OG, RG, RA, and some angles. We can go from there. So OG is right here. OG is one of these three lines. If I'm trying to find one of these three, I can find any of them and then I know that they're all the same. So again, if I'm looking for any of them, well, I would look for right triangles that I have two sides of. So this forms a right triangle here. I only know one side. Here, I only know one side. Actually, no. If I, if I know that this is 96 and this is 96 because they're the same, then of course we have a right triangle here. 28, 96, and then OG is C. So we would do A squared plus B squared equals c squared and i would i'd find that and i would end up with 100 i'm just gonna spoiler alert that is 100 okay so so og is 100 that means gt is 100 and that means ga is 100 uh so og is 100 rg i don't know yet ra uh i don't oh ra i know ra is totally just 80 because i already marked it so ra is just gonna be 80. Okay, RG, I, I would need to do the same thing. I need to say that, hey, look, now that I know this is 100, I do have enough to do Pythagorean theorem here and be like, okay, well, A squared, which is RG, plus 80 squared equals 100 squared. It ends up being 60 squared. 60 squared plus 80 squared equals 100 squared. You do that in your calculator. Knock that down. Blam. Okay, uh, now we get to the angle. So GXO, so GXO is actually this angle right here. Of course, that's just a right angle. So that, of course, is 90 degrees. So far, so good. OGR looks like ogre, which is cool. And OGR is this angle right here. This is probably the most tricky one. But 
a couple ways to go about this. Um, is that, again, I was looking here, but the way that I think about this is that I just mark these two segments congruent, which means that triangle OGA is isosceles. So if I had an isosceles triangle normally, right, and this was the 100 and that's 100, so that's isosceles, that means that this angle and this angle are congruent. The ones opposite your congruent sides, the base angles, in other words, are congruent. So this angle is congruent, I should double, and this angle are congruent. So that means this is 41, so this is 41 as well. So if this is 41, of course, that is 10, right? Because it's 51 together. And so if that's 41, I can subtract because that's 90. Subtract from 180 to get 49 right here. And of course, if that's 41, 90, then this is also 49. And so OGR was 49. OGA, well, are these two 49s together? In other words, simply just about 98. Oh, 98 degrees. Boy band of the 90s. Okay. Okay. Does that make sense? Again, look for Pythagorean theorem. If you know two sides of a right triangle, they're going to be right triangles. We have a lot of perpendicular things or, or sides or lines that are dis distances, of course, are perpendicular, stuff like that. Okay, and then we'll do one more here, which I think are some of the easier ones, um, but who knows? Nope, come here, there you go. And I'm talking about a centroid. So the centroid again is, let's just make a huge one. Look at that, look at that. Can I, look, it's pressure sensitive guys. Pretty sweet, right? Okay, let's clear that up. Okay. Um, and so what we end up with is we have some values here. We have some values on here. And we know that it's a centroid. So when I think centroid, again, I'm going to mark everything I know. Centroid is here. Okay. Uh, the centroid is basically splits the medians up, which means I know that these lines are going to be medians, which means if they're medians, they go from a vertex to a midpoint of the opposite side, so, which means that this has to be a midpoint. So again, if that's 40, well, again, I can just mark it right now while I'm at it. Uh, that means MT, that means T would have to be a midpoint. So if this is 38, then that's 38. I'll mark it as I go. I, G, G has to be a midpoint because it's a median, which means, and I don't know anything about that yet. Actually, I do know M, Z is 56, which means, again, half of this, right? It's going to be 28 and 28. So I'm getting stuff done without even worrying about it now. Okay. So I sort of did use that one already. Um... PI, so I'm looking at PI, PI is 40. I already did that without even knowing about it. ZI was 38 and 38, right, 76. GM, GM is 28, I did that without even knowing, nice. PS, okay, so PS is, I gotta get get one. So I have three segments, PS, SZ, and PZ are all part of this mid, this uh, median here. If I know one of those segments, I can get them all. So I actually do know SZ is 31, which means that this has to be half of that or 15.5. I'm not trying, I am trying to find PS, okay? But I'm also trying to find PZ, the whole thing. So I add them up, right, and you get 46.5. Remember that the small part is always half of the large part. Um, and it's always one third of the whole thing. So I could do 46.5 divided by three and should get 15.5. Uh, SI, okay, well I don't have anything all along this one yet, GS, SI, or GI, right? But I do know GS is 34, so the whole thing, right? Wait, no, GS, sorry, is this one right here. The GS is 34, so I know the small one in this case. So if I double it to 68, then that's the large one. So SI is 68. GI is the whole thing, so I'd add them up, making that, what, 102. Okay, finally we have MS and ST. So I uh, use this and this. So M, so MT is this whole thing, is 58. And so if I know this is, whatever this is, this is doublet. So I know that basically 3X, right, the whole thing, 2X plus X, has to be 58. Now I sort of made a mistake here because 58 is not divided by three evenly it's not going to be a great number. It's going to be some not great number. Let's just see, 58 
divided by three is 19.33333. So I'd probably not have you do that, but we're gonna go ahead and round it, so there it is. So we'll say that this right here is 19.3, the small one. I'm gonna double it. Nope, I'm not, because I'm not clicked on it, but I would, had I been clicked on it. Uh, double it times two, so 36.6. And again, that's approximate, but we'll we'll deal. So 19.3 was M, or no, 36.6 was MS. I could have also multiplied the whole thing by two thirds to get the longer piece. It's just easier to divide by three, I think, to get the small piece first. And then ST was 19.3. I'd probably make it more divisible, evenly divisible than that. But, okay. So there we go, right? The, the main the main problems again, it, it does come down to sort of knowing the the facts before we begin, and a good place to start. Again, I don't know why we'd be starting now. But let's just say we are starting right now. A good place to look would be starting here, right? Hey, name what are the angle bisectors? Memorize it. Medians intersect where? Altitudes where? Perpendicular bisectors are where? Then come down here and be like, well, what are those things? Like, what does an altitude look like? What does a median look like? What is? Did I mess up? I don't know. Um, what does a uh, an angle bisector look? What does a perpendicular bisector look like? Okay, what do they actually look like? And then knowing where, if I have more than one of them, where they would intersect, right? Where the perpendicular bisectors would intersect, the circumcenter, etc. Okay, then I'd say, well, if I do have an in center, what do I know about it? Oh, it's equidistant from the sides of the triangle. Again, the key to this is all in line too. So even if we don't know this, we should be able to sort of at least figure it out. Uh, I mean, figure it out by looking it up or hopefully figuring it out and then checking your answer. Uh, circumcenter of a triangle is equidistant to the vertices of the triangle and the centroid is two thirds of the distance. Uh, of course, knowing where these things can be, those are all in the notes as well, but be, I fill out this chart already so you can look back on it. But again, that's just like, hey, do I know this stuff? Can I identify this stuff? Can I now apply this stuff that I know? That's, that's the idea, all right? How are we doing? Who's left? All right, guys. Yeah, so we can look in the comp side if you have questions. Um, yeah, me too. Okay, uh, I wanna... Okay, we got some things going here, okay. Yeah, Carly, that's rude. Anyway, so as far as, um, okay. So if you have questions, again, I'll be, I'll be available if you want to have any quick questions before, before school. Um, and uh, second and third, uh, sixth. Again, you just have to, you just have to, uh, let me know in advance so we can be around. I'll do. So again, like I said, if you if you have second or third, you feel free to come and ask me. I can hopefully help. Um, but again, I think we're we're good here. I'm going to be. <laughs> 
from you guys. Uh, anyway, so I'm going to be calling it off now. Um, but sorry, it was a little later than usual. Okay. I gotta, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end it and then start a new one for CompSci and then uh, just so it's like a different one. Okay. All right, guys. I will talk to you tomorrow. Again, hopefully it was helpful. Uh, make sure you hit that like button. Um, like and subscribe. Um, and, um, oh man, you know what I need? You know, when people whose followers, like they call them something, uh, I needed, I needed to, uh, you know, have something to call you guys. The geo crew, the, uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll work on it. We'll work on it. We'll work on it. Okay. All right. See you guys. Wait, what? You know, I'm not sure who that is. Uh, I'm not, I don't know. Obviously someone cool. It's a Gator fan. All right. Ready? Here we go. Bye.